Welcome everybody, welcome to my first YouTube video. I'm so excited for you guys to be here. I'm excited just to see what God is gonna do. And honestly, let me just open up the prayer. Lord, thank you for this day. I thank you for this time, Lord. And I just pray for this person across from me, Lord. I pray that you just watch over us, Lord. And I pray that you just work in their hearts, Lord. As I share my testimony, Lord, I pray that this just glorifies you, Lord. I pray that you just remove me out of the way. You remove any of my feelings or anything out the way, Lord. And you allow me to just be a willing vessel just to sit here and share your good news, Lord. And I just pray in your holy and mighty name, Lord, that you just work on this person across from me, Lord, and you just really just work in their hearts, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for this day, Lord. None of this is possible without you, God. And I just thank you, Lord. I give you all the honor, all the glory, and all the praise, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Well, welcome. I'm honestly just very excited, honestly. I just really give God all the glory for even allowing me to do this. Like, he gave me the idea, and it's just really just amazing that now I'm here today and I'm just seeing the idea just come alive and just to be able to just sit here and just do this is like just very like you know very 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 honored I'm very honored because the Lord doesn't give things to us just cuz ignore that I'm outside but he doesn't really just give things for you just to have he gives them to you because he wants you to do them and I'm just very happy that he's given me this opportunity so honestly, well, first off, first things first, I'm just gonna share my testimony and I'm gonna just see what God does with it. And honestly, I just pray that this helps somebody. Whoever it's meant for, I pray that it helps you and it just ignites a fire into you. But, so my, so when I, where it all starts at, it starts where I was at college. I went to Wheeling University. I played football there and that's when the Lord really got a hold of my life and said, I, I want you. He's always wanted me, but that was when he revealed himself to me. It's in the, and when I, while I was at school. So I was at school, I was really at the lowest point in my life when I was there. Um, it was my junior year, it was spring semester, and I just had everything in my life going wrong. I was in a relationship for four years. It was a four-year relationship. I truly did love the girl that I was with, but it just, everything was going wrong. We weren't able to really see eye to eye on a lot of things, and we just ended up destroying each other. Also, I was really not, I wasn't at the level I should have been when I was there for football, and I was really upset that I wasn't hitting where I should be hitting at. So, I didn't really play at all. I didn't play at all. I didn't get no PT or anything for a fro. And that just really just caused a lot of depression in my life because coming from the background that I had, I was somebody who played every snap on the field. I had everything I wanted whenever I played because I was able to produce at a high at a high level when I was in high school. And now going to going to a division two program and not being able to see the field at all, it just really just like destroyed me mentally. And then also like, it just affected like my whole, that whole time, like everything was going wrong. I was in the classroom, I wasn't doing anything. I was on the urge of getting kicked out. Um, I just had my own personal issues and I just had, you know, everybody has family issues and I have my own family issues as well. And like one thing about my family is like whenever something is going on, no matter how far away I am, it always affects me. And it's not nothing on them. It's just how much I love them. And when I see it's a lot of struggle and a lot of things going on, it just really hits me hard. But so I'm going to just really, I'm going to start off of my exit meeting when I was at when I had we have these things called exit meetings basically like just a roundup of how your season and your um your how your season went for football and so I had exit meetings with my coach and literally like they flat out just told me flat out like it was like honestly if you don't get your grades right we're gonna pull your scholarship away and honestly that just hit me hard. I didn't, they didn't know that I was really affected by that. But when they told me that I was like really broken at that point, like I was already broken, but like, I just got broke even more. Cause then I was just like, man, I'm about to get kicked out of school. 
I'm about to be a failure. I'm the first to go to college and then I, I flunk out. Like, this is just terrible. And like me, I'm the oldest. So like I have younger siblings looking up to me. And so I don't want to disappoint my younger siblings or I also don't want to fail in their eyes. So like, I don't want to fail because I want them to be better than me. And so I'm trying to set the bar as high as I possibly can. And so when they told me that if I don't get my grades in line, they're gonna take my scholarship away. And then honestly, I'm just not, I'm gonna be kicked out of school at that point because I couldn't really pay for school like that. So um, fast forward, um, I left school, I went home and now, I'm at home, I'm doing all types of schoolwork just to get in pass. Like at the time, my ex-girlfriend, she was helping me do my schoolwork. Thank you, honestly, because she helped me a lot. But she was helping me doing my schoolwork. And so I ended up passing by the grace of God. Literally by the grace of God, I ended up passing. And then I had a little bit of relief. I didn't know it was God really working his way into my life, but like he really showed up in that moment when I really needed him because I was so terrified. I was thinking I was go I was thinking of all types of craziness. I was thinking I was gonna be a bum. I wasn't gonna be able to provide for myself. I was thinking all types of stuff. But but God really came through and just really worked a miracle and brought me back to be able to play. So that was the first time, first sign that he showed up. I didn't really notice until now, but that was the first time he showed up. Then, so me and my girlfriend, well, ex-girlfriend, we broke up. I really was hurt a lot. Nobody, I didn't really show it like that, but I was really jacked up because I was really hurting when me and her broke up. Um, so then I started falling into smoking so hard. I already, I used to smoke before that, but like, man, I'm talking like I was at that moment where I was dependent on weed just to get out of my reality. Like everything, I felt like my whole life was just crashing and breaking down. And literally I would just smoke weed just so I could feel the escape, that generic escape that weed gives. I wanted that. I was so down low in my life that I was, I was grateful. I was like, you know what? I was allowing myself to be satisfied by something that was a generic, that was temporary. And I was using weed to just temporarily fix me, not knowing that it was only temporary fixing me. I thought that it was honestly fixing me. In that moment, I was like, okay, this is what everybody does to get away from stress and how they feel better. And so I started smoking weed. And honestly, I lost myself more smoking weed than without it. But I was smoking weed every day literally every day. It was to the point where I was spending $30 a day just so I can get away from my depression and anxiety and all the stress I had in my life. I feel like a drug addict saying this, but like literally I was just feeling that type of way, type of way. And so then we get to like the week of my parents, um, the week of my parents wedding anniversary it took me so long i had like drew a blank it took me so long to remember it was the week of my parents wedding anniversary that was when everything just that's when god was like making his move into my life everything was just hitting me hard and hard and hard so we go to a thursday night right? it's a thursday night and Shout out to Cisco, man. I used to, I, he doesn't even know, but he low-key kind of played a role in my life by letting me know where to go play basketball at. But literally, I was looking for somewhere to play basketball. I was like, weed isn't working. Nothing is working right now. I was like, I'm gonna go play basketball just to get my mind off of everything I got going on. So I go to the church I go to now. <laughs> this is so crazy how God like literally works in your life. So my church, we host basketball runs every Thursday night. And so that, that night, I went to the basketball runs at my church. Now, I get there, right? I am looking like a, I'm looking a mess. Like you could just see, like I am going through it. And the person I see, 
for the first time in like almost two years was my god brother Noah. I seen my god brother Noah and I haven't seen him in like two years prior to that. He done got married. You know, he's a mighty man of God. He serves God, loves God. He is somebody who walks with God a lot. And so I see my god brother and I'm just like, yo. <laughs> I'm like, yo, what's up? Like, I, I, like, I kind of got a little bit happy because I haven't seen him in forever. So I seen him. And mind you, I didn't even know. Like, I knew he got taller, but like, this man is like, mad tall. Like, I look like a little guy compared to him, and I'm always the one that in the room that looks way taller. So I see him, and like, he's just sitting there. He's like, what's up, bro? Like, I haven't seen you in a, in a long time. He asked me if I was all right. I lied to his face. I told him, I was like, yeah, I'm good. <laughs> I was good. The whole time I was broken. I didn't even want to be on this earth. Like suicide was really on my mind. And in, 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 in that week, suicide was on my mind. Like I really didn't want to be here no more because I just felt like, I was like, life is just too much for me. And I might as well just be gone. I might as well just be dead. But so... Me and him chopped it up for a little bit. Then I go and play basketball. I play some games. I play terrible, terrible. I play terrible, lost like dang near every game I got on. I was like, you know what, forget this. I'm finna just go to my house. So I'm about to leave. And my god brother, he's off to the side. I was telling him, I was like, all right, yo. I was telling him like, basically it was dabbing up and let him know I was leaving. He was like, well, if you're not doing anything on Sunday, bro, you should come to church. And so I'm just sitting here, I'm like, all right, I was like, maybe I will, maybe I will. Cause me and Noah, like I knew Noah since I was four. And so like, we grew up, we went to church together and everything, but you know, I had a fallout and, all, and very much well, he had the same thing. He didn't, he stopped going for a long time too. So he was like, yeah, if you're not doing anything, come to church Sunday. So I was like, all right, whatever. So boom, that Thursday, right? Then. Friday comes, the night of my parents' anniversary. This was in um, 2022, by the way. Night of my parents' anniversary, well, no, not 2022, 2021. So, night of my parents' anniversary, get there and, man, well, no, actually, that night, pause that, that Thursday night, right, I go home and I tell my mom, I'm like, I go home, actually, I didn't tell my mom anything. I go home and I was still bad. So I went, left, got high, smoked some weed, got high real quick, came back. My mom locked the door. So I'm knocking on the door. My mom comes to open the door and she just sees my face. And like, my mom just pulled me in the bathroom and she told me, she was like, don't you ever come in my house looking like that because your brothers and sisters look up to you. And so, those words that my mom st st said to me sticks with me every day of my life. I think about those exact words. And little did I know that was God talking through my mom. He was basically saying, you're your older brother and you got four siblings that look up to you. And there's no way, shape or form that you should be allowing yourself to be a bad example for them. You're letting the enemy have everything he wants with you. And he is literally trying to get that, that family deal. He's trying to take you out and then take everybody else with take everybody else with you. I didn't know that at that moment, but when my mom said that to me, it really stuck with me. I was like, okay, mom. Like I, I like I was I was fried, but like I was like, okay, mom, like I hear you and I understand you. I won't ever do this again. And she talked to me and like she just really said that to me. And you could just see the disappointment in her face. And like that's one thing. I never want to disappoint my mom. Like I love my mom so much never want to disappoint her and so now i go upstairs i go to sleep next day friday come that's my parents anniversary <laughs> i'm still stressing i'm stressing bad i'm sitting there talking to my mom i'm like yeah blah, blah, my life is just too much for me blah 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 i'm finna go get high i'm finna go smoke she was like no what you need to do is you need to go and see God. You need to go talk to God and have a conversation with God about what's going on in your life. You know, I want to know something. Honestly, man, we need more mothers like that. <laughs> we need more mothers like that. My mom saw me at my lowest point and she said, you know what? We need to, she directed me to the one person that could fix me. 
nowadays people just be directing their children to all these other things all this other stuff direct your kids to god that is the number if you want your kid to be whole and you want your kid to have a great life direct them to the lord don't direct them to some worldly thing because the world can't fix you only god can fix you and literally you just need to direct uh, direct your children to the lord stop directing them to this world this world will just destroy them even more and as parents i'm not even a parent myself i you know i want to be one day but as parents you should want to protect your kids not send them to the world that broke you i don't make it don't make no sense but my mom directed me to god and honestly that was like one of the that was like the deal breaker right there i told myself that night i told myself i said you know what i'm going to church on sunday I looked up the church. I had the church address. I looked up the church. I looked up what time it start. You know, it told me at ten. I just, you know, double checked. Ten o'clock. I was like, all right, bet. I'm gonna be up at ten. So Saturday goes by. That was just really. It was really nothing in that day. I was just stressing a lot. It was a lot. God was working on me slowly, but like in that day, I was stressing bad. I was like, I was like, man, this sucks. Like suicide was really heavy on me. Like I wanted to kill myself at that point. I was like, man, there's no way. I'm not about to live this life. Like. I literally just don't want to be here no more. I wanted to kill myself. I was getting high still. Everything was just going wrong. So that night, I laid down and went to sleep. Sunday morning comes. Sunday morning comes. God literally woke me up. I never in my life, from, from that day, before that day came, I never in my life woke up at 8 o'clock. I woke up at eight o'clock in that morning, eight o'clock in the morning. I woke up and God would just rose me up. He was like, we're going to church today. I didn't know, but I was in a point in my life where I was like, I'm going to church. I'm going to go to church this day. Today's the day I'm going to church. So I get dressed, you know, put my little gray turtleneck on, some black jeans and some vans, got my little coach bag. So I'm getting dressed, I eat something. You know, pass the time by, it's like 9, 9.40. I go downstairs. Well, no, actually it was nine o'clock. I go downstairs, wake my mom up. I'm like, mom, come on, let's go. My mom told me, she said, I'm too tired. I don't want to go. And at that point I was like, man, I really want my mom to go to church with me. I wanted my mom to go because I was, you know, I was scared. And like, my mom is like my best friend. And she was like, really like the one person I go to for everything. And so literally, I think that was a moment where God was like, you need to go and do this by yourself. You need to go and do this by yourself. So then I just was like, okay. I was like, mom, where's your car keys at? She was like, in my purse, go get them. I get them. At that time, it's like 940 now. I was sitting down there for a little minute talking to her. But 940 now, I get in the car and I drive all the way to Gateway. So I go to Gateway and I get there and it's about to be, you know, service is already started. I'm like two minutes late. I took my time getting there. So I'm getting there and as soon as I get out of my car, I get there, I get greeted at the door. I get greeted at the door and that probably was like one of the, I felt like I was home at that moment. I felt like I was home. Like I felt like this is where I was supposed to be. So they made me feel very, very welcome. You know, shout out to the door people. You know, my door holders, they really make, they really make a change in people's lives and they don't get enough credit for it. A lot of people don't give door holders credit, even around the world, if you're a door holder, like shout out to you because those are the first people who get make that, that make a, say, make a person who's about to give up on life and a person who doesn't know God actually see God in those first two seconds. So I get there, they greet me, make me feel welcome. As you, and then as I get into the room, like I can hear the praises of God be sung and it was so loud. So I open the doors to the sanctuary and as soon as I walk in, I could feel like a lit, a weight, like a big old weight was just lifted right up off of my shoulders. And it was, it felt like literally, it sounds crazy how I'm explaining it, but it felt like I had like, you know, one of them, um, in the Bible it calls it a yoke. 
but like you know them little things where they hold the captives um well like the prisoners and it's like a thing around their neck i felt like i had one of those on and i was just sitting there and i walked into the sanctuary and i could just feel it just get lifted straight up off of me so i'm walking and i walk all the way to the front god just brings me all the way to the front on the left side all the way to the front and so as soon as i get to the front my god brother is standing off to the left of me and all he did is it so it's just so crazy all my god brother did was just turn to me he was surprised to see me he didn't know he told me after that after like you know later on in life he told me he was like yo i didn't even think you were gonna come to church i just said it just to say it i didn't think it was gonna do something and literally all my god brother did that day was literally turn to me while i was at church and asked me if i was okay and literally as soon as he asked me if i was okay i started crying I started crying so bad. I'm talking like the crying where snot is coming out your nose, all of that. That was when God had set me free and I felt him so strong that day. That was the day where I felt God so strong. And literally that day, that was the life changing day. God changed my life. He set me free. He redeemed me. He renewed me. He washed me in his blood and he cleansed my spirit that day. That day he really changed me and I thank him for that day because that day will I'll never forget that day. But literally that day that song was like the songs that were being sung just felt like they were directed towards me. Like literally every song that was sung felt like the words were for me. And I just couldn't even bear myself but to keep on crying. I literally cried through that whole service. That whole service I cried because I just felt God's presence and it felt like he was just talking and singing to me. And literally then, then when Pastor Ray came up, Pastor came and literally he preached and literally every word that he preached was for me. Literally, that the God they say God will make a whole service just for one person. That day, that service was meant for me. I truly believe like that service was meant for me. And literally, every word was preached that day, and that day changed my life, man. Like it's just it was so life changing. I'm just sitting here reminiscing and thinking, and I'm just like, man, that day really changed me. And so then, at the end of the service, you know, they gave an altar call to for anybody who wants to give their life to Jesus. Now at that point I'm like, man, listen, I'm giving my life. I told myself that. I literally said today is the day I want to sac surrender and give my life to the Lord. So literally I went to the altar and I was actually I prayed by myself for a little bit. I literally said to God, I said, God, dear Jesus, I said, Lord, look, I'm sorry for everything that I've done. I'm sorry that I'm here broken as can be. But Lord, I want to give my life to you. I want to give you my life. I said I was so ready to take my own life away and to just throw it all away, Lord. I'm giving my life to you because I don't deserve to have this life anymore. I want you to take this life and I want you to control it. I want you to have it. I want you to do whatever you want, Lord. So whatever it takes, Lord, I'm giving it all to you. And that day I surrendered and gave my life to the Lord. I asked him to come into my heart and he changed me. He truly changed me that day. He made me a new man. He made me a better big brother, a better son. He loved me and he still loves me. And he loved me and he loved me and he loved me and he loved me. And he loved me. Literally, God took God took somebody who was broken, filled with despair, filled with depression, filled with anxiety, and took all of that, all of that worldly badness, he took all of that and he turned it into a beautiful masterpiece. And I'm not just talking, about, I'm not trying to just sit here and glorify myself, but he took somebody who was broken and all of that and he turned it into something beautiful. He takes care of me and he tends to all my needs. He tends to everything that I needed in my life in that moment. He filled me up to the top, overflow, filled me up. And 
now I'm just sitting here and I'm just like, I'm like really just, I'd be lost for words to just talk about the things that God has done in my life. And it's just amazing. And so literally what I want to say to you guys is this. I have actually, I have a verse I want to share with you guys. So I'm going to open my Bible up. And literally, this is my life verse. This is the verse that just speaks to me the most. Matthew 18, verse 10 to um, 14. See that you do see that you do not despise one of these little ones. For I tell you that in heaven their their angels always see the face of my Father who is in heaven. What do you think if a man has a hundred sheep and one of them has gone astray? Does he not leave the ninety nine on the mountains and go in search of the one that went astray? And if he finds it, truly I say to you, he rejoices over it more. Then over the ninety-nine that never went astray, so that so it is not the will of my Father who is in heaven that one of these little ones should perish. Basically, what that's saying is God will leave the ninety-nine righteous people to go and find that one person who went astray. And on that day, April thirtieth, I was that one sheep. I was that one sheep that went astray, and God came and found me. And literally he made such a life changing thing and his word is true. He said it said it. He will leave his ninety nine to go find me and he found me on that day. So what I'm here to say basically, if you're that person who feels lost, if you're that person who feels like they are at the end of their life, go find find the Lord. Ask the Lord to come into your heart, and I promise you he'll give you purpose. I promise you he'll change a lot of things in your life. I promise you he will love you like no other. The love of the Lord is so different. It's not something that somebody else can replicate. We can't replicate the, the, the love of the Lord. All we can do is do our best to show love like him, but we can't show his love. So I'm just asking in my heart that you guys do that and seek the Lord. And I'm going to just end this video. I hope you guys have an amazing day. Peace.